Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, we have in this module we have looked at uh, the unsteady flows, particularly focusing on uh, our attention to the shock tube, uh, and that is a very good template problem to understand 1D unsteady gas dynamic flows. And we went through in detail uh, solving all parts uh, of flow features that are present in a uh, shock tube. Uh, now, let us just do few numericals to get these concepts. A uh, little more clear, so let us do some numericals. So, consider this uh, uh, example numerical example 1. Consider a pipe in which air at 300 Kelvin and uh, 1.5 into 10 power 3 uh, Newton per meter square Pascal uh, uh, flows uniformly with a um, speed of 150 meter per second. The end of the pipe is suddenly closed by a valve and a shock wave is propagated back into the pipe. Compute the speed of the wave and uh, the pressure and temperature of the air which has been brought to rest. So, uh, this problem uh, if you look at it, so you uh, know that initial condition, the initial condition is that you have a flow. Mm, uh, that is going at 150 meter per second. In uh, originally, it is a open tube. Okay, so 150 meter per second, and T1 is 300 Kelvin, and P1 is 1.5 10 power 3 Pascal. Then suddenly, this valve or this portion is closed by a valve. It's a sudden. This is important. Uh, this has happened suddenly. So, instantaneously, uh, the velocity at this uh, uh, wall should be going to 0. So, you should get u is equal to 0 at the wall. Now, this uh, you should uh, uh, sort of connect it to whatever we had discussed in our classes on the unsteady flows and moving shock waves. When is this accomplished? Mm, this kind of uh, uh, motion can be accomplished when you have to suddenly bring a flow to rest which is a high speed flow uh, 150 meters per second is quite a good speed. Um, this is done uh, by a, a shock this is very similar to the reflected shock problem of the shock tube uh, where you have the incident shock behind the incident shock there is uh, mass motion of the gas. Uh, this mass motion is not uh, insignificant, they have uh, relatively good velocities and uh, on striking the end wall of the uh, shock tube immediately the uh, velocity has to go to 0. If this has to be accomplished then a, a reflected shock is formed or a shock wave is formed which moves into the gas, which moves in, in this case it moves into the pipe with a speed uh, w r and this is uh, u 1 and we can say this is u 2, u 2 is 0 being the fixed laboratory frame of reference. How do you analyze this uh, problem? Uh, it is a moving shock problem and uh, uh, all we have to do is change the frame of reference from laboratory frame you move on to the shock. If you do that you will impose a velocity equivalent velocity w r here. Now, u 1 is also in the same direction. So, the relative velocity here is w r plus u 1 and relative velocity here is w r and now you can apply stationary uh, equations, uh, stationary gas equations. So, if I say in the stationary frame of reference uh, what is m 1? m 1 is uh, w r plus u 1 
by a1 is uh, m1 now uh, also consider what is uh, u1 by u2 okay u1 by u2 is uh, rho 2 by rho 1 is uh, wr plus u1 by wr is equal to rho 2 by rho 1 of the shock which is for the shock with the uh, Mach number m1 uh, this is well known m1 square by 1 plus m1 square ok. Now, can we express we know that this is the equation for m1 can we express um, wr in terms of m1 you can write it wr is m1 a1 minus u1 ok. So, uh, once this is uh, known so you have this and you have this relation. So, we can put them together. So, we will put it together uh, and write them uh, together. So, you have gamma plus 1 by 2 m 1 square divided by 1 plus is equal to uh, u 1 plus w r by u 1 uh, w r which is u 1 plus m 1 minus u 1 divided by um, w r is m 1 a 1 minus u 1. So, here these terms go off. So, you get m 1 a 1 and 1 m 1 can be cancelled off with this 2 here. So, now you get a gamma plus 1 by 2 m 1 multiplied by m 1 a 1 minus u 1 equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square multiplied by a 1 because a 1 is still remaining here. So, now we can write this. So, gamma plus 1 by 2 m 1 square a 1 minus gamma plus 1 by 2 m 1 u 1 is equal to a 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square a 1. So, now you have you are approaching a uh, quadratic uh, different uh, quadratic equation algebraic equation. So, uh, you can take this here. So, the side so gamma plus 1 by 2 minus gamma plus 1 by 2 m 1 square or oh, this is how it looks. So, a 1 minus gamma plus 1 by 2 u 1 m 1 is a 1 equal to 0. So, this is 2 by 2 is equal to 1. So, but a 1 m 1 square minus gamma plus 1 by 2 u 1 m 1 minus a 1 equal to 0. Uh, the roots of this so m 1 is equal to uh, gamma plus 1 by 2 u 1 mm, plus uh, square root of uh, uh, gamma plus 1 by 2 u 1 whole square plus 4 a 1 square divided by 2 a 1. This is gamma plus 1 by 2 u 1 by a 1. So, gamma plus 1 by 4 rather plus you can take uh, 2 a 1 inside. So, you will get gamma plus 1 by 4 u 1 by a 1 whole square plus 2 a 1 if you take inside will be 4 a, a 1 square. So, this is plus 1. Uh, you will take uh, the positive term 
because uh, if you take negative 1 this will be greater than gamma plus 1 by uh, 4 u 1 by a 1. So, it will have a negative value. So, that is not possible. So, you take the positive value. Now, in this we know u 1 is known 150 meter per second a 1 is uh, square root of gamma r t 1 for air 1.4 287 multiplied by 300. Uh, this value is known, it is around it should be 347, coming close to 347. And uh, you can solve this now, uh, you can substitute these values here and find out what is M1 m1 it turns out to be 1.29. So, what is the wave speed w r? It is m1 a1 minus u1 and uh, you can substitute the values again and uh, the wave speed is 297.63 meter per second. Uh, so, you can you should understand that Mach number for the reflected way what we consider is actually wr plus u1 by a1 not wr by a1 so please uh, bear that in mind when you have a primary shock moving into a quiescent medium uh, so here uh, this is the primary shock moving into a quiescent medium a1 and u1 is 0 so here uh, ms if you consider ms is w by a1 because u1 is u1 is 0 here reflected uh, i mean if you transform the coordinates also you will get it but if you consider a reflected wave going in to a region where there is already a certain velocity u1 and this is wr then uh, the speed of uh, the mach number for that particular wave is w r plus u 1 by a 1. This has to be uh, borne in mind, it is, it is you have to be careful uh, with this. So, we still have um, the values for pressure and temperature uh, behind the shock. So, that is uh, once you know m 1 it is straightforward. forward, uh, you just have to uh, look at either the tables or look at a calculator and find out what is p 2 by p 1. Uh, we know m1 is 1.29 p2 by p1 is 1.775 so consequence p2 is 2.66 into 10 power 5 uh, pascals similarly t2 by t1 is 1.185 uh, you can put uh, this value mm, and uh, you will get uh, T 2 as 355.5 Kelvin. So, you can do this uh, math it is straightforward. So, now uh, once this is known now let us uh, move to the. So, this is a good example of uh, shock wave uh, reflection uh, from um, the uh, end uh, and uh, it is applied to a problem where uh, suddenly the valve is brought to uh, close and uh, the flow is brought to rest. So, those kind of problems also have uh, uh, relations to the shock tube uh, problem. So, uh, the second uh, example is uh, calculate the pressure required in the driver section of a shock tube to produce a shock Mach number 3 in the driven section which contains air at an initial temperature of 300 Kelvin and uh, pressure uh, of 0 0.01 atmosphere. So, uh, it is low pressure you can draw the schematic here and here you know T 1 is 300 Kelvin and P 1 is 0 0.01 atmosphere. Uh, we do not know what is P 4, we have to find P 4, driver gas is air at 300 Kelvin. So, it is the same gas 
T4 is 300 and uh, gamma 4 uh, is equal to gamma 1 the same as if flow behind the shock wave is directly used without shock reflection for a short duration wind tunnel. So, uh, this is a case where you are taking the uh, shock tube and at the end of it you are attaching a wind tunnel. So, this uh, combination is known as shock tunnel we will discuss this in uh, coming classes, hmm. uh, but principle almost all of it you are uh, for the shock tube is already known. So, uh, after the diaphragm ruptures you have a shock wave and you have a contact surface there is a slug of gas between this uh, having high pressure P 2 T 2 and this uh, slug of gas uh, is then utilized uh, for uh, the wind tunnel. You may use this uh, um, by having a shock reflection back and increasing the pressures to P 5 T 5 and that forms the reservoir section for the uh, wind tunnel or you can use just uh, the P 2 T 2 and what is said here is there is no shock reflection that means directly we are using uh, P 2 T 2. Uh, given that the test section is 8 meters away. So, the distance between uh, the diaphragm station and the test section is 8 meters and um, contact surface uh, uh, is the disturbance which limits the testing time. So, um, if you draw the x c diagrams which we have been drawing for uh, some time now in the previous classes. Uh, we saw that there is a shock discontinuity, there is an contact surface discontinuity and there are expansion fans. So, uh, essentially this test gas between uh, the shock and the contact surface is the gas that is used for any kind of um, experiments or aerodynamic testing. Um, but uh, you could get other effects like if you allow this to run for longer time uh, the expansion fans can reflect off the end wall and come and make the flow non uniform here. Essentially that ends the test time or the other case is that uh, the contact surface passes through the uh, test section once that is done again you get all non uniform flows beyond the contact surface. These are the two cases. Uh, so, here it says it is the contact surface that is uh, uh, the uh, limiting the test time. So, uh, the test time is limited by this difference between the shock and the contact surface. So, what do we need to calculate static temperature and pressure behind the shock, stagnation total uh, temperature and pressure, uh, test time available, the angle of the Mach line in the flow behind the shock. Okay. So, uh, first uh, point is uh, uh, calculate the pressure required in the driver section. So, what is P 4? So, directly you can apply the equations P 4 by P 1 2 gamma 1 m 1 square gamma 1 minus 1 by gamma 1 plus 1. So, this is uh, direct from you can use the textbooks or you can use the notes and so this formula if you uh, put we know m 1 m 1 is Mac 3 uh, Mac number is 3. Uh, so, m 1 is 3. Mm -hmm and a 1 by a 4 both are uh, a 1 equal to a 4 equal to square root of gamma r uh, t which is 1.4 multiplied by 287 multiplied by 300 ok. So, gamma 4 equal to gamma 1 we know this and uh, if you substitute this you can get p 4 by p 1 directly it is 632 point 6 to 7. So, you can see to produce a Mach 3 flow of Mach 3 shock wave in a shock tube you need uh, 600 times uh, the uh, pressure in the uh, 
um, driver uh, driven section. So, the that is why you generally keep high pressure as well as low pressure. So, you evacuate the um, section which is driven section is kept at low pressures in this case 0 0.01 atmospheres. Otherwise, uh, if it was at 1 atmosphere you can imagine you need to uh, give 632 atmospheres here, but uh, you can manage a fairly uh, strong shock uh, by using low pressures here and then the pressure at V 4 is only 6.326 which is um, 6.33 bar. Okay, so, that gives you the uh, pressure uh, uh, that uh, pressure ratio across the shock tube that needs to be provided uh, so that you get the shock and once the shock is formed what is the uh, stagnation pressure and the stagnation temperature. So, for uh, the flow so that is P 0 2 and the T 0 2 these are the conditions. Uh, so, for that we need first P 2 uh, by P 1 and T 2 by T 1. Uh, this you can get uh, given that it is a Mach 3 uh, flow 10.33 and T 2 by T 1 is 2.679. So, P 2 is uh, 0 0.1033 atmospheres while T 2 is 803. 0.7 Kelvin. Now, uh, stagnation pressure if you have to calculate for uh, the region 2 you have to do the calculation for uh, P 0 2 is P 2 multiplied by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square gamma by gamma minus 1. What is m 2? m 2 is u 2 by a 2. Now, you have to calculate uh, u 2. Okay. So, you can uh, you know m s you know p 2 by p 1 you can directly use uh, uh, the uh, relations of uh, what is u 2 by a 2 in terms of a 1 by gamma and the various ones that you can also use that or you can also go slightly from the first uh, principles that u 2 is um, w s multiplied by 1 minus rho 1 by rho 2 and uh, if you know p 2 by p 1 and t 2 by t 1 you can calculate rho, rho 1 by rho 2 mm -hmm. and uh, rho 1 by rho 2 turns out to be 0 0.2593 and uh, w s is nothing but m 1 multiplied by a 1. So, from this you can get uh, u 2 mm -hmm. u 2 is uh, u 2 turns out to be um, 771.488 meter per second. So, it is not small it is uh, very good velocity, uh, but uh, a 2 is also large therefore, you get uh, m 2 uh, is uh, 1.3576. Okay. So, this is m 2. Mm. So, correspondingly now once you know m 2, uh, m 2 is u 2 by a 2, a 2 is square root of gamma r t 2. Okay. So, now uh, p 0 2 and t 0 2 can be found out. Uh, so, p 0 2 is uh, 0 0.3098 atmospheres and T 0 2 is 1099.95 Kelvin. So, you see it is quite high temperature approaching 1100 Kelvin. Now, what is given is that the contact surface is the one which limits the test time and if you draw the X T diagram the shock wave passes right away and contact surface is here and the test section is uh, 8 meters. So, this difference in time is the test time basically. So, this is the difference in time or delta t which is the test time. Okay. So, this is control uh, contact surface this is uh, 
shock ok. So, uh, how do you calculate this it is the same distance. So, what is delta t for the same distance uh, uh, the contact uh, surface takes the time 8 divided by u 2 speed of the contact surface minus uh, speed of shock 8 by um, w uh, u 2 and w both are known. So, you get uh, delta t as 2.688 minus 3 seconds. So, you can see this is quite small 2.688 milliseconds, uh, but uh, these uh, facilities are often used for high temperature flows and high hypersonic flows, high enthalpy flows and test times there are quite short, but uh, the instrumentation is also made uh, similarly it is made advanced and uh, people get a lot of uh, useful results from such uh, facilities. What is the Mac, uh, angle of Mach line in the M2 flow? Uh, nu is sin inverse uh, 1 by M2. Uh, this turns out to be 47.44 degrees. Okay. So, that solves the uh, this problem. So, uh, there are two problems we solved one uh, the first one was uh, the application of the unsteady principles that we had done towards a problem where uh, mm, there is a high speed flow in a pipe and suddenly a valve is closed then what happens uh, and how do we calculate uh, quantities there. The second one was a uh, uh, template shock tube problem where uh, we know what is the shock Mach number required and we calculate various uh, quantities like what is the uh, pressure ratio that needs to be provided so that uh, we can achieve that um, shock Mach number and what is the properties of the slug of gas which is usually used for any applications including uh, in wind tunnels. So, uh, with this we come to a, a close on uh, unsteady flows. And the next module we will be looking at moving from uh, 1D equations, we were all in the 1D framework to uh, 2D framework and look at uh, shock waves uh, and expansions in 2D framework. So, that is uh, when you go to 2D framework, um, the shock waves uh, become uh, at an angle to the flow, which is uh, known as oblique waves. So, what is normal shock is actually a special form of oblique shock where the angle is normal to the flow, but at any other angle you get an oblique shock and we will look at oblique shocks and uh, the counterpart uh, which will expand the flow, shock waves compress the flow, uh, they are expansion waves and Prandtl-Meyer expansion waves. Um, so, we will see at that uh, in the uh, next module.